Today we're going to do something unique to this newsletter, so far, I think. We're going to sign up for a third-party service. The reason we're doing this is because running your own SMTP server and, in particular, getting it set up so that your emails are reliably delivered to users without being flagged as spam or otherwise marked as toxic in some way by services like Gmail is really obnoxious. We can set up a third-party SMTP server that handles all that crap for us for the low, low price of free, at least for the limited amount of emails we're going to be sending, which seems like a good deal to me. There are about 100 million SMTP providers out there, but I like Mailgun because they have a developer's first approach, which means a very robust API and a solid set of easy-to-use modules ready to be plugged into your application. So if you don't already have a Mailgun account, fire up a browser and head for Mailgun.com. Click the Sign Up button in the upper right. You might notice that they want your credit card information, but don't worry. You don't have to provide it. However, they're very trustworthy, and I assure you they won't bill you unless your contact form suddenly starts blasting out thousands of emails every month. And even then, they'll warn you first. If you don't want to fill in your info, that's fine. Just uncheck the box. You'll be limited to only sending to email addresses that have been authorized, but that's fine. We'll cover that in a second. So fill in the rest of the form and create your account. I actually already have a Mailgun account, so I'm going to log into it. Be back in a second. Once you've created your account, there's a validation step. The old click the link in the email we sent you process. So go through that. Once you're all confirmed and signed in and all that good stuff, you'll be looking at your dashboard. It might like this, or it might look like the new one. We're going to go ahead and switch to the new one. Below the probably empty sending overview chart, you should see a list of sending domains. There should be a sandbox domain listed. Something like sandboxcc and then a big hex string dot mailgun dot org. You can't see it here because I've blurred it out. You'll just have to trust me on this one. That's your test domain and it's all you're going to need. Click on it. You will be presented with two choices in the main window. We're going to use the API, so click on that. And you'll be given a list of languages to choose from. Obviously you want Node.js, so choose that. And you'll be given some info and some sample code. You can ignore the simple code, but you'll need the API key and the base URL of your sandbox. One other thing you need to do here, approve a receiving email address. This will be the address that our form sends to, but Mailgun in trial mode won't send to any email addresses without approval. So down below, or in the right column depending on the size of your browser, under authorized recipients, add whichever address you want to use. This will require you to go through another confirmation step by clicking a link that's emailed to the address you put into the box, so go do that. I'll wait. That's probably a copyright infringement. Anyway, all set. Good. Let's switch over to our text editor and start writing code. Okay, I lied. Before we switch to the text editor, we actually need to switch to a terminal window or command prompt. Kill our server and type the following. Let that do its thing. This will install their handy node module that we'll be using on the back end. Once it's done, restart your server, preferably with NodeMon, and now head for our text editor. Open up slash route slash api.js, and let's wire this thing up. First, under this line, add the following. Now we need to configure Mailgun, so below this line, add a padding line, and then this code. Now, here's the deal. You have to replace those blurred out variables with your own values from Mailgun. The ones that are blurred out, you can't see because they're blurred out, because they're my actual API keys and I don't want you to see them. Anyway, they won't work, and you'll get nothing but Mailgun errors, so make sure you use your own values. For the record, the sandbox value is going to look something like this, and the API key value is going to look something like this. But those are fake, so don't use them. Cool? Cool. Head down to the second post catch and make it look like this. See what we're doing here? We're creating a data object using the submitted form values along with an email address to send the message to, and a subject, and then we're sending it. If there's an error, we throw an error. If not, all's well, so we just return our JSON. 
This seems like a good time to note that you need to change captaincode.closebrace.com to the email address you registered with Mailgun, or you will not receive any emails. Sorry for all the shouting, but I'm trying to head off frustration for you. Now that we have all of this in our API, we need to add it to our server-side form processing. So save this file, and open up slash route slash contact.js. I'm not going to repeat code here. I'm very confident you folks can handle this. You need the import, the three new lines at the top, and then the sending code in the second post catch, just like in the API file. There's only one difference. Instead of this line, you would replace it with this. Note, don't do that in the API file even though I just did. This would go in contact.js. I'm just trying to save a little time on this video is all. In fact, let's go ahead and revert that. If you were editing contact.js, save that file too, and restart your server unless Nodemon did it for you, and submit your contact form. We have an empty error. That's not very useful. Let's take a look at our console. It is pretty awesome that I made sure to shout at you guys to replace this captain code at closebrace.com, but then didn't actually replace it with an email address I can receive email at. That's quality. So uh, I'm going to blur this out, but here we go. Hey, that's a little bit better. Now on another monitor, I'm going to check my email. And it did in fact come through. If you've got your mailgun configuration in your code set up correctly, you should receive a contact email too. Hey guys, me from the not so distant future here. So it turns out when you're doing this test that because of the way sandboxes work, you need this email input to be the same as any emails that you have validated in Mailgun. If you use an example email or some nonsense email, you won't actually receive the email in your inbox. So make sure it's an authorized email address, same as in your code. It doesn't have to be the same one as in your code, you could authorize multiple email addresses, but it does need to be an authorized email address. This won't be a problem if you've put in a credit card, it's only if you decided not to put in the credit card. We're done for this week, and we're almost done with this series entirely. Next week we're going to talk about the obvious security flaw of storing your API keys in your code, and how to mitigate it. After that, who knows? Reply to this video and tell me what you'd like to learn about. See you next week.